Oh no, chem guy. Sodium? Sodium has 11 electrons. What are all the addresses for all the electrons? Well, what I'm going to do right now is, instead of writing everyone out individually, I'm going to give you what the allowables are at every different n equals or principal quantum number level that the electrons are found in the ground state of sodium. And then, now stay with me, because I'm going to do all 11 here by going through what's allowable. Okay, so where do we start? Always at n equals 1. So, in sodium, the first electron is going to be found at n equals 1, l equals 0, ml equals 0, and plus 1 half. And that means that the second electron is 1, 0, 0, minus 1 half. Those are the first two electrons. They're found at n equals 1. Now, you're going to say to me, oh, Kem guy, now wait a minute. Lithium was also 1, 0, 0, plus 1 half, and 1, 0, 0, minus 1 half. And you just said that you can't have them. No, 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 no. You can have the same set of quantum numbers in different atoms, right? But in the same atom, electrons cannot have the same quantum numbers. That's what Pauli's exclusion principle is. Now, so we've got the first two. That, there's two electrons that have been represented now. Now we go on to n equals 2 and we start loading up that orbital. Now, at n equals 2, l can equal 0. We'll go there first, but it can also equal 1 because L's domain is 0 and all the way to 1 less than the principal quantum number. So we're going to go to the 0 first, and we're going to go 1, 0, 0. And then once you go, and why are we going to 0 here? Why don't you go to the negative 1 there? No, no, no. When L equals 0, the ML can only equal 0. So 2, 0, 0, plus 1 half is the third electron. And 2, 0, 0, minus 1 half is the fourth electron out of the 11 of sodium. Now where do we go? Okay. 2, the zeros are done. 2, 1. And if we go 2, 1, that's now going to be... Now, by the way, I told you before that this was the s orbital, and the 1 is designated the p orbitals. And p actually has... You can go from 2p, this orbital called the p orbital, you can go from negative 1 to 0 to 1 here to load up these two electrons. So the p orbital has three suborbitals that you can put two electrons each into. Okay, so that means 2, 1, now where do we go? Negative 1 and plus 1 half. Okay, that there is now where you have the next electron, which is the fifth one of sodium. Now, where do we go next? Well, you know what? In the 2p, we could actually then go to negative 1 and then go to the negative 1 half. But if you want to fill them consecutively and you want to understand the principle that I'm going to show you later with something called box diagrams, just make sure that you get this. It's Hund's rule, which says, you know, when you're loading up electrons into suborbitals, you're putting them into tiny spaces here. Look, you don't want to pair up electrons when they actually have the freedom to be able to move into an orbital or a suborbital by themselves. For instance, if you've got three bedrooms upstairs and you've got, uh, uh, okay, let's say two bedrooms upstairs. <laughs> you've got two bedrooms upstairs, but you've got, uh, the, here's, your, here's your brother and your brother, and you put them both into one room. Um, they don't like that when there's two bedrooms available because everybody wants their own space. And so, electrons want their own space too. So now watch this. We go 2. For the, for, the, for the fifth electron, you knew we went 2, 1, negative 1, plus a half. Then we go 2, 1, 0, plus a half. 2, 1, 0. 2, 1, 1, <laughs> plus a half. Right? Okay, sorry. And what that does is we've now put that plus one half electrons into each of these three suborbitals at the p level. Now, where do we go next? We go two, one, negative one, negative a half. Two, one, zero, negative a half. Two, one, one, negative a half. What have we now done? We have put in to the, the n equals two level in these three suborbitals here, right, we've put in two electrons for a total of six. 
but at the 200, zero, zero, we put in two electrons, and the total electrons that you can have at n equals 2 is 8. We have now described 8 of the 10, uh, eight of the, 10 of the 11 electrons that are found in sodium. Thank you. Okay, so now there's only one left, right? So where are we going to go? There's n equals 3. Where do we go for, w w at n equals 3? Well, what's allowable? At n equals 3, 0, 1, and 2 are allowable here for L. That's the s orbital, the p orbital, and something called the d orbitals. By the way, the s can only go from here, L equals, when L equals 0, you can only go to 0 here to put in two electrons. And so you know then that the 11th electron in sodium is going to be 3, 0, 0, plus 1 half. And then if we kept filling, we would go 3, 0, 0, minus 1 half, but then we would get to 3, 1. You know that there are three allowable suborbitals here, but when we went to go to 3, 2, there would be five allowable suborbitals at the d level. Each one of these can hold a plus 1 half and a negative 1 half electron. So at the d's, you can have 10 electrons total. At the p's, 6, and the s is 2 for a total of 18 electrons that you could have at n equals 3. But sodium only needs one electron there at 3, 0, 0, plus 1 half. Whew! What are these orbital things and what do they look like? Right now, coming up.